since that point, we have seen a consistent decline, both as well, once again, depicted in the first uh, chart, but in the second chart that shows year over year, uh, it's been a continuous and steady decline year over year. Rents in the GTA and Toronto continue to drop for the 12th month in a row. And we're gonna go through all the numbers and charts in terms of area, biggest percentage decrease, uh, month to month rent decrease, and compared to last year, we're gonna go through all the numbers today in today's video. Let's get to it. This is Sam from Sibiri 6 Real Estate, as well as Remax Realtron Realty Inc. As always, feel free to subscribe, comment, rate, and review. And my contact information is in the description box. Feel free to get in touch. I have my drink here. It is the holidays. We're going to go through some rental numbers in the rental market, GTA-wide, uh, and break down some figures for you. Let's get to it. First and foremost, going into 2021, the rents have dropped and continue to drop for 12 month in a row. Uh, we're gonna show a couple of charts on the screen and go through the numbers and break down, in my opinion, area to area, price to price, why this is occurring and continuing to occur. Let's look at this first graph we have here, which depicts the monthly rent and average across all property types in the GTA as we went along in 2020 and the last two months of 2019 are also included as well. November of 2019, we started with an average of 2461 and most recent month we have ended with an average of $2,000, barely above $2,000 at 2056. When you talk about all property types across the GTA, we are also talking about freehold properties and larger condominiums, four bedroom, one bedroom, uh, basements, all property types. So you would expect the bigger property types and further out locations, whether they're freehold or condos, who have been hit less as hard by the decline of the condom market, both in rental aspect and purchase and sale. You would expect those properties to drop or rather bring up the average or maintain the average above a certain level. However, as we see in the most recent months, despite the freehold rental properties, which once again have been hit, but not as hard, we are closely approaching an average price of below $2,000 per month. Now, as to the reasons this decline in the rental market is occurring, I have talked about in several videos and for many months, shortly put, is a combination of many factors that all lead to the same location or the same conclusion, which is a oversupply and not enough demand. Now, why is there oversupply? You have the vacant home tax, you have the Airbnb regulations, you have the pandemic at large that makes a lot of rental properties, which are condominiums in nature, less desirable in central locations and the lowest rates ever for buyers uh, and the pr uh, proximity to work no longer being an issue. All of this in conjunction with one another in some lead to an oversupply where certain landlords investors are motivated to sell because they're facing negative cash flow see the biggest drop was april to march going from 2369 to 2280 and keep that in mind because when i introduce the next graph you have to understand that this first initial graph only shows the average rent as it declines Obviously, it's not the case that every single year the average rent increases with every other month that's upcoming, right? It's not like every month is a higher average rent than the preceding month. That doesn't occur. It's seasonal in nature. Every year even in hot rental markets, you have certain months that are higher, certain months that are lower, and it's not linear in fashion. For that reason, you need to look at year over year change. And then we have to look at the second chart slash graph, which is a bar graph that shows and depicts the year over year in change. And you can see, even though in the first initial graph, it was a steady decline from November of 2019, where it was at 2461 until March of 2020, where the average price was around 2369, even though there was a steady decline, nonetheless, at that point of March, the average rent was still high higher than the previous year, year over year, steadily declined to the point of 2369 per month, starting from 2461. Year over year, that still was a increase until we hit an average of 2280, which occurred around March, April. In the second graph, we really do see the actual true decline because year over year, it was not up, it was down 1%. Since that point, we have seen a consistent decline both as well, once again, depicted in the first uh, chart, but in the second chart that shows year over year, uh, it's been a continuous and steady decline year over year. 
going from 1% to 5% to 8% to 10% to 12% ending up at a decline year over year of 16% when the average rent was $2,056. I mean, that's a substantial decline. It's bad news for investors, landlords, and uh, people who are looking to buy to invest. But for everyone else, this is pretty much good news, meaning buyers who are end users in the short term, but maybe in the long term want to be uh, investors uh, and tenants who want to continue to rent. This is good news for these individuals. First and foremost, let's take into account tenants. Now you have many options. You are in the position of uh, leverage, which is a rare occurrence in the history of Toronto real estate. The market forces are on your side. Now you have an opportunity to leverage one rental offer against another. Due to the same reasons now that landlords no longer have the leverage and are in some cases facing, as we can see, these reduced rental amounts and depending on how much they put down, uh, potentially facing negative cash flow. In my previous video that I've talked about condo purchase and sale prices, I've said that this trend is going to continue both on the rental side of things and the purchase sale side of things, in my opinion, until March, April of 2021. Not that after that point, prices will start to increase, but I think they're gonna bottom out in a certain degree around March, April. Let's look at this last chart, which is essentially a bar graph that represents uh, what we've been talking about, but based on location. On the left side, you see the average rent based on area, and then on the right side, you see the percentage drop. And it shouldn't be to your surprise if you've been watching my content and my advice that the areas that have seen the biggest drop are areas that are the most condo rich with the exception of Oakville. First and foremost on that list is Toronto at an average price of $2,066. I would not be surprised if we do see an average below $2,000 by February. And this represents an 18.9% decrease year over year. And I've been driving my investor buyers towards Richmond Hill for the reasons, as you can see on the screen, because first off, their investors, not in users, right? So uh, I do get to afford to kind of point them more so in the directions that I think are best for them versus end users, where it's really up to their tastes in terms of area. But if you're an investor, you're basically looking at the numbers. You're not looking at your you know, use. You're not looking at the area you like, because it doesn't matter if you like it or not. Is it good for the uh, investing purposes? Although Richmond Hill has seen a decrease of 9.1%, as you can see on the top of the list, it still has a higher average price than Toronto and some of the more central southern locations uh, and can bring more returns in the short term, even though if you're only working with 15 to 20% down, you might be looking at a break even point or a slight loss, but the rebound will occur first there, then Toronto. And same thing applies to uh, Vaughn, right? Once again, Northern further out areas. My end user buyer clients, particularly of condominiums, I have been directing them towards Etobicoke, Mississauga, Toronto, because as you can see, the biggest drops have occurred in these areas. The landlords are somewhat desperate. The prices are dropping as well. And my buyers who are end users in the short term, maybe investors in the long term, can get good value for their money because that's where landlords are struggling the most. And supply side of things, a majority of inventory is coming from landlords. Anyways, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, sorry if that video was far too long. As always, I would like to give credit to Rentals Let's CA for their great charts. Uh, I have finished this video. I have finished this drink. Uh, I'm going to go refill my drink. Enjoy the holidays. I hope you enjoy the holidays as well. And stay in touch if you have any questions, subscribe, comment, rate, and review, and stay safe.